Good morning sa ating lahat. And um, happy Lord's Day. Um, praise God na nakarating naman tayong lahat dito ng ligtas. And hindi siya aksidente na nandito tayong lahat. And so, right now, Narito kami Nagpapakumbaba Sumasamba Sa iisang Diyos Hinahanap namin Karita ng iyong muka Sumasamba Sa iyong Sumasamba sa iisang Diyos 
Nais po namin makita ang iyong mukha, Panginoon. Nais po namin ihandog sa inyo ang aming pag-ibig sa pamamagitan po ng awitin ng himig na nanggagaling po sa aming mga puso. Lord, remind us always that we come to worship because of you. We come to worship to come before a glorious God, a faithful God, a sovereign God. Nawa, Panginoon, makatagpo namin ang isang Diyos na matapat. Makatagpo namin kayo sa iyong pagmamahal, sa iyong pagtsatsaga, Panginoon, sa iyong pagkapatawad sa amin at bigigyan mo kami ng ang bawat isa ng pagkakataon na tumayo sa iyong presensya. Salamat, O Diyos, for the grace sa biyaya na binigay mo sa tuwing linggo kami po ay makakadako sa iyong presensya bilang isang pamilya, Panginoon. Kaya narito kami nagpapakumbaba, sumasamba sa iisang Diyos sa langit. Diyos ng aming buhay, Diyos ng, ng aming mga pamilya, Diyos ng aming simbahan. Kubilos ka, Panginoon, sa aming gitna. Salamat, O Diyos. Dakila nga ang iyong pangalan. Amen, amen. Sana sa ating araw-araw, no, we really want to see the face of the Lord. Gusto nyo ba yun na every time you open the Bible, every time you pray, you're really conscious to meet our God? Amen? And then, nakakainggit si Moses, no? Si Moses was considered a friend of God because he's, meron siya yung kaisa-isa na the Lord met Moses like a man meets a friend no so sana maging friend tayo oh. Ma friend natin si God whenever we come to him but most importantly let's revere him for who he is and this next song is a song that will declare that we will take every step of the way to fulfill the purpose no to run the race and to finish the race and and claim the crown that God has prepared for us sabi ni Paul no so we will rejoice whatever what comes our way and we will be in step with the spirit amen amen so okay, let's let's sing this truth about the lord I can sing with my whole heart, I have all I need. In Jesus, my Savior, my joy is complete. Onward to glory, yet here I will wait. I will trust in Christ every step I take. Yes, Lord, we will trust in you. I am sure of your promise to guide me each day. The sun may oppose me, I won't be ashamed. Whatever I face, Lord, it won't be in vain. I will trust in Christ every step I take. For all of my days, I will live for your glory. Running with courage and faith. Yes, Lord. The prize of my journey, the joy of salvation to meet my King face to face. I 
I am looking to Jesus, perfecter of faith. My heart set on heaven where treasure awaits. I'll run with endurance to finish the race. I will trust in Christ every step I take. For all of my days I will live for your glory. Running with courage and faith. Give us faith, Lord. The prize of my journey. The joy of salvation. To meet my King face to face. For all of my days I will live for your glory. Running with courage and faith. The prize of my journey. The joy of salvation. To meet my King face to face to meet my King face to face I will I will rejoice let's sing this whatever come my way God you're faithful to save and I will I will rejoice I know that God is with me always rejoice in all circumstances I will, I will rejoice Whatever comes my way God, you're faithful to save I will, I will rejoice I know that God is with me always For all of my days I will live for your glory Running with courage and faith the prize of the journey, the joy of salvation, to me, my King face to face, to me, my King face to face, to me, my King face to face. Give us faith, Lord, to obey you every step of the way until we fulfill your purposes and plan in our lives. Have your way in us, Lord God. And all God's people say, Amen. Every step of the way, we will rejoice, Lord, and we will obey you. Thank you, Lord. Let's go around and greet one another with the love of the Lord. Sige po, bigay natin a warm handshake, hug, smile. Hallelujah. Nakapa, napakasaya at nakapainam na nandito tayo sa house of the Lord. Ayan. Mari po tayong maupo at tatawagin ko po yung mga Sunday school kids. Ha? Number one si Joko. <laughs> Bilis. Maybe let's ask one of the teachers to pray. Sino may boses sa inyo? Sesika, may best boy boses ka na ba? Wala pa? Si teacher? Julia. Let's call on Julia to pray. Um, let's pray po. Uh, Lord, uh, our Father in heaven, we thank you for today, Lord God, na ginabayan niyo po kami sa pagpunta rito. And... Thank you, Lord God, for another day, Panginoon, na makakapag-worship uh, po kami sa inyo at makakapag-serve po sa inyo. And Lord, um, uh, guide, i-guide niyo po kami na sa araw na to and itong mga batang ito, Lord God, na why um, uh, i-guide niyo po ang kanyang, kanilang mga puso at isipan, Panginoon. Maging ang, ang mga teachers, Lord God, na magtuturo sa kanila. Gabayan niyo rin po ang bawat isa sa amin, Panginoon, ngayong araw na to. 
uh, we ask all, the, all these things, Panginoon, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Shana. Thank you, Julia. Teacher Julia. As we prepare for the Lord's table, pre ano no, talagang privilege natin na uh, every month we can do this. Kasi ito yung isang utos ng ating Panginoong Jesus. Do this as often nga eh. Sana, Pastor, baka pwedeng every Sunday. <laughs> do this as often. So, to prepare our hearts, we would want to ask you to sing with us this song, Behold the Lamb. And let's just reflect on the lyrics and the message and look back on God's faithfulness, on God's love, how He sacrificed everything just for us to be saved. Let's everyone, let's all stand and worship Him. The blood that cleanses every stain of sin shed for you. Drink and remember He drained that cup that all may enter in to receive. The life of God So we share
the King around the table of the King Behold the Lamb who's seated on the throne Thank you Lord that someday we'll see you face to face and thank you for the opportunity that we can always remember you with this ordinance, Lord, that you have given for your people, for your disciples. So as we do this, Lord, may we give honor to you, prepare our hearts, cleanse us, Lord, and may this moment be sacred before you. In Jesus' name, amen. Mari po tayong maupo, tatawagin ko po si Pastor Ronel. As we come to the table of the King, as we come to the Lord's table, let us uh, attend to the words of institution of this ordinance na sinalita po ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo at ibinigay din po kay Apostol Pablo sa 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 28 onwards. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body, eats and drinks judgment on himself. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Mga kapatid, this is the Lord's table. This is not our table. It is the Lord's table. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament. It is a ceremony. That is to say, it is a sign, a seal of, a, of the covenant of grace. Ito po ay panahon ng pag -aala, that Jesus took a human body, a body that was given for us. Our time at the Lord's table is a time of commemoration. It is a time of it is a time to remember Jesus and commemorate two things his suffering and secondly his sacrifice for us to save us from our sins to redeem us. It is also a time of celebration. We celebrate first his compassion. Jesus willingly took our sins upon himself that we might be delivered from our sins and from the penalty of our sins. The Lord Jesus did what He did and suffered what He did because He loved us all. We also celebrate His conquest. Jesus Christ rose from the dead after His death on the cross and thank God because He lives and all those who believe in Him will live also. Third, we also celebrate His coming, that His promise to us. When we observe the Lord's Supper, we are telling this world that we believe that Jesus is coming again. Our time at the Lord's table is also a time, not only a time of commemoration and celebration, but also a time for contemplation. It is a time for us to reflect upon the condition of our lives, our heart, so that we can be sure we are where we need to be with the Lord. Before we participate in the service, we must contemplate our salvation and secondly, our sanctification. The Lord is telling us to examine our own lives. We are to examine ourselves and bring our sins to His altar in confession and repentance. We need to be sure that we are clean before we come to His table. Mga kapatid, the Lord's table is for the believers. It is for those who trust in Jesus to save them from their sins. Only believers should participate in the Lord's Supper because... Wrongly participating in the Lord's Supper carries the threat of judgment. Please don't take the Lord's Supper lightly. 
It is one of the most precious gifts Christ has given to His church. If you are not a believer, not a true follower of Jesus, we are glad that you are here. Salamat po at uh, naririto po kayo ngayon at kasama po namin kayo. But we ask you to refrain from taking. But we do ask you to think about what is going around you. To think, to wait, to pray, to repent, and to trust in Jesus Christ. Come to Him and believe in Him and trust Him for life, for salvation, and for eternity. And please ask us questions afterwards. That's one of the great things about the Lord's Supper for unbelievers as they come. Why do you all do that? What are you doing? And so, if you're an unbeliever and you're here, please ask us question afterwards. And you are welcome. And this time, may I call on the elders of the church, the church council, to please come up here or in front and let us be ready to distribute the elements. Let's come to the Lord in prayer and I suggest that let's come to Him and open our hearts before Him and let the Lord examine our hearts before we come to His table. Let us pray. O Lord our God, kami po ay nagpapaungbabang dumudulog sa inyong banal na presensya. And we humble ourselves, Panginoon, by Your grace, acknowledging that we are poor, needy, and wretched sinners who deserve not mercy, kundi, Panginoon, sana nandun yung wrath ninyo, yung puot ninyo, nandun yung judgment ninyo. You, you, you would be just to banish us into outer darkness where there is wailing and gnashing of teeth. But you have been gracious to us, Panginoon. Marami pong salamat. You have favored us. Pinatawad niyo po kami sa aming mga kasalanan. Tinawag niyo po kami mula sa kadiliman at dinala, Panginoon, sa pakikipag-isa, pakikipag-ungnayan sa aming Panginoong Heso Kristo. And you have adopted us into your family. You indwelt us by your Holy Spirit. You've given to us the hope of glory. Indeed, O Lord, we are moved to wonder and to love and praise by this display ng inyong masagana at walang hanggang pag-ibig sa bawat isa sa amin sa pamagitan ng aming Panginoong Heso Kristo. Thank you, O Lord Jesus Christ, for all that you have done for us. Lord, would you now examine our hearts and our life? If there's any wicked ways in us, Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. If there is any sin that we have committed against you that would hinder us in coming to you, O Lord, we ask, please cleanse us, O God, with the blood, holy blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, right now, we humbly come before your presence and as we come now, Lord, to your table, Lord, would you now ready our hearts. Thank you so much, O God. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
For I received from the Lord what I have delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Gawin po natin. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Gawin po natin. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. He will ask Elder J.D. to lead us in a thanksgiving prayer. Let us pray. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this glorious day where we can celebrate and remember your suffering on the cross, your sacrifice for our sins. We come before you in humility, Father. You are victorious and you are glorified forever. And just give you back all the glory and praise, Father. We love you. We really love you. In Jesus' name, pray. Amen. Let's continue to worship the Lord. Let's all stand. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It is proper to give our worship to Him, the one who gave everything for us. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, we enthrone you. We proclaim you are King, standing here in the midst of us. We raise you up with our praise, Jesus, we enthrone you, Jesus. In their families, Lord God, proclaim you are, you are King of Earth, King of KBCF, standing here in the midst of us. We raise you up with our praise. Let's raise Jesus with our praises. And as we worship, be your throne and as we worship build your throne 
Come on, church, shout to him. Power and majesty. search every heart here. Kung meron pang mga area sa buhay namin that we are on the driver's seat. Lord, we surrender to you now, Lord. Take your place. Be enthroned in our life, Lord. Every aspect of our life. In our thoughts. In our heart's desires, Lord in our ambitions, in our security, Lord. Be enthroned. Take your place, Lord, in the life of our families, Lord God. Be the center, Lord, of our life. Be enthroned. Be the throne, Lord God. We proclaim that you are king of our hearts. We declare that you are Lord, our Master. And there's nothing we desire but to please you, Lord. To obey you, Lord. To honor you and glorify you. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. As we hear your word this morning, Lord, prepare our hearts. Thank you, Lord that you always teach us, you always rebuke us and remind us of your word. Transform our hearts, transform our minds, Lord, to the power of your holy word. Thank you, Jesus. Please, re please remain standing for the scripture reading. Let's call on Ate Yellow. Good morning, Paul. Let us open our Bibles to the book of Ezra, chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. Ezra, chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. 
I will be reading from the New Living Translation. In the first year of King Cyrus of Persia, the Lord fulfilled the prophecy he had given through Jeremiah. He stirred the heart of Cyrus to put this proclamation in writing and to send it throughout his kingdom. This is what King Cyrus of Persia says. The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth. He has appointed me to build him a temple at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Any of you who are his people may go to Jerusalem in Judah to rebuild this temple of the Lord, the God of Israel, who lives in Jerusalem, and may your God be with you. Wherever this Jewish remnant is found, let their neighbors contribute toward their expenses by giving them silver and gold, supplies for the journey, and livestock, as well as a voluntary offering for the temple of God in Jerusalem. Then God stirred the hearts of the priests and Levites and the leaders of the tribes of Judah and Benjamin to go to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple of the Lord. And all their neighbors assisted by giving them articles of silver and gold, supplies for the journey, and livestock. They gave them many valuable gifts in addition to all the voluntary offerings. King Cyrus himself brought out the articles that King Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the Lord's temple in Jerusalem and had placed in the temple of his own gods. Cyrus directed Mithrida, the treasurer of Persia, to count these items and present them to Sheshbazar, the leader of the exiles returning to Judah. This is a list of the items that were returned. 30 gold basins, 1,000 silver basins, 29 silver incense burners, 30 gold bowls, 410 silver bowls, and 1,000 other items. In all, there were 5,400 articles of gold and silver. Shesh Bazaar brought all of these along when the exiles went from Babylon to Jerusalem. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we truly thank you and appreciate the time you have given us to praise you and to know you more. I pray for Pastor Jun Gonzaga that you will bless him with the wisdom na kinakailangan niya upang maiparating sa amin ng malinaw ang iyong salita. In Jesus' name, Amen. You may all be seated. Maraming salamat sa panalangin. At uh, maraming maraming salamat din sa ating worship team, sa kanilang panguna sa ating panlambahan. Uh, patuloy po natin iyong bukas ang ating mga Biblia at uh, ang ating mga Bible apps dahil uh, yung mga hindi may reflect sa ating PowerPoint or just like to point them out to you. Okay. Magsimula po tayo sa ating pag-aaral sa aklat ni Ezra. Um, sa Biblia ng mga Hebreyo, yan pong Ezra at Nehemiah ay tinuturing na isang aklat. Dahil uh, iisa lang din ang pinaka-tema kung paano nangyari ang lahat. At yun nga, yung kautusan ni Haring Cyrus ng Persia. At dito, sa kanyang order, na itayo muli ang templo at ganun din, na isaayos din ang Jerusalem. At dito sa kanyang ginawang ito, ando dun po yung muling ipinahayag yung kagustuhan ng Panginoon na marinu, no? Ma muling mabuo ang kanyang bayang Israel. The renewal of the nation Israel. At kasama rito ay yung pong pagtata pag muling uh, pagtatayo ng templo at sa ating napag-aralan sa bukop na Himaya, yung pagsasaayos ng wall 
ng Jerusalem, ganun din ng kabuuan ng Jerusalem. Pero, para sa atin, tingin ko, ang sinasabi ng Panginoon ay yung muling pukawin yung ating Christian hope sa ating mga puso. Kaya, the sounding of our Christian hope. Mamaya, makikita po natin yan. So, the book of Ezra begins with the resounding of the renewal of the people of God. And as we can see, the remnant responded by rebuilding the temple. Yan po in the book of Ezra. And later on, the city of Jerusalem, its wall, the book of Nehemiah. Pero sa overall theme po natin ay rebuilding and renewal no? sa ating pananampalataya. So, ano ang lesson sa atin ng uh, ating mga talata ngayong umaga. The Lord is sounding to us our Christian hope. And here's Romans 15.4. For whatever was writ written in the former days was written for our instruction that through the endurance and through the encouragement of the scripture, we might have hope. No? Uh, and I'm taking it uh, para bang covering even the book of Ezra. Na the resounding of the renewal para sa people of God nung time nila Ezra and Nehemiah ay sa atin naman pagpukaw ng Panginoon muli sa pag-asa na meron tayo. Kaya nga, mas maganda, balikan natin yung mga binasa sa atin. Tang una-una natin yung matutunghayan dito. No? The resounding of the renewal for the people of God signals the fulfillment of God's promise. No? Signal the fulfillment of God's promise. Balikan natin yung binasa sa atin kanina. In the first year of King Cyrus of Persia, in order that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be accomplished. No? So, ano doon yung pangako ng Panginoon sa bansang Israel through the prophet Jeremiah? Kung maalala ninyo, si prophet Jeremiah, siya po yung prophet nung ang Jerusalem ay bumaksak sa kamay ni King Nebuchadnezzar. No? Uh, that's 586 B.C. No? Um, nearly 50 years uh, bago nagkaroon na itong edict ni King Cyrus. No? Dahil nung 539, sinakop naman ni King Cyrus ang Babylonia at yun naman ang simula ng pinakamalawak na imperyo. No? Sabi nga, ito daw yung biggest empire throughout the whole world. No? And that's the Persian Empire. Yung kanilang pagsasakop ay umabot hanggang India. Ganun kalawak po yung Persian Empire. Pero tingnan, tungayan natin na sinasabi rito. No? Paano tinupad ng Panginoon yung kanyang pangako to the prophet Jeremiah? The Lord stirred up the spirit of the king of Cyrus of Persia. No? He stirred up the spirit of King Cyrus. No? Kaya nga nagpadala siya ng mga herald all over his reign para iproklama no? na sa kanyang utos ay muling itatayo ang templo sa Jerusalem at muling mabubuo ang bansang Israel Ganon din ang Jerusalem at ang mga walls nito. Maganda yung sinasabi ni King Cyrus dito, di ba? King Cyrus of Persia, the Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth. And he has charged me to build him this temple. Tapos ando dun yung kanyang utos, no? Kaya kayong mga bayan ng Diyos, no? Do are those who are his people, may their God be with them, are now permitted to go up to Jerusalem and rebuild the house of the Lord, the God of Israel. And then, ano dun yung kanyang dagdag na utos, no? Sa kanilang pagbabalik, inutusan din niya ang kanyang mga sinasakupan. No? Bigyan sila ng baon. <laughs> Pabaunan ninyo yung mga bayan ng Diyos. Ito na rin ang inyong parang pag-aalay. 
dun sa templo, dun sa Jerusalem, kung ito'y magagawa. Free will offerings for the house of God in Jerusalem. Parang napakagandang pakinggan. No? Pero, unang-una, yan po si King Cyrus, eh talagang pinakamakapangyarihang hari nung panahon na yun. Pinakamalawa ka yung kanyang imperyo. No? Naging Christian na ba siya? <laughs> Naging mananampalataya ba siya? Hindi eh. Dahil dun sa mga extra-biblical resources, ang kanilang description kay King Cyrus is the restorer of temples. Ibig sabihin, hindi lamang yung bansang Israel ang kanyang ni-restore. No? So lahat ng kanyang mga sinasakupan, kung sila may mga templo at mayroon sila mga sinasabang Diyos, o sige, sige, dyan kayo. No? <laughs> Itatayo ko muli ang inyong templo. <laughs> No? Ganon siya naging famous. So kung tutusin, is giving lip service to that extent of who the God of Israel is. No? Para bang, wow, this is the God of the heaven, pero ako ang king. <laughs> at kung tutusin, makikita at alam din naman ng mga Israelita yan. No? Kaya dito, makikita natin, mga kapatid, na ginamit ng Panginoon ang pinakamak makapangyarihang hari nung panahon na yun. No? At dito, parang ang dating dito, para bang, sige, balik kayo. Hindi, pero utos yan. That's an edict. No? Kung interesado kayo makita yan, umatras lang kayo dun sa Second Chronicles. Dahil dun sa dulo ng Second Chronicles, yan din ang sinabi. Pero dun nakasulat, no? rise up and go. Ibig kayo, utos siya. They are being commanded. This is an edict. No? Parang panukala. <laughs> Balik kayo. Parang kung tutusin nga ito, parang deportation. Eh. <laughs> Dinideport uli sila pabalik sa kanilang bansa. So yun, actually yun ang dating niya. No? Pero hindi niya alam, ini-steer ng Lord ang heart niya. At ginagamit siya para magsimulang katuparan ng kanyang pangako sa bansang Israel. Pero, ano yung word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah? In order that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. No? Ano yun? Andiyan po. Pamilyar tayo dito. Jeremiah chapter 29 starting from verse 10. Although, alam na alam natin yung Jeremiah 29 dyan, di ba? Kasi... Simula pa lamang sa verse 1 ng 29, dyan na yung kautusan ng Panginoon through the prophet Jeremiah. No? Stay put kayo dyan sa Babylon. No? Uh, seek their peace. No? <laughs> Bakit? Kasi may plano ko para sa inyo. Ano sinasabi ng Lord dito? For thus says the Lord, when 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will visit you and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare are not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. And I will restore your fortunes and gather from you all the nations and all the uh, gather you from all the nations and all the places where, the, uh, where I have driven you, declares them, and I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. So, sa Bible, mahalaga po yung temang exile. No? Kasi, yan po yung parang hatol ng Panginoon sa kanila dahil sa kanila hindi, hindi pagiging tapat sa kanilang side of the covenant. Kasi, they have a covenant with God. Hindi sila tapat. So, Sabi ng Lord, <laughs> hala, alis kayo dyan no? sa lupang pangako. Una, yung tinatawag nilang Northern Kingdom, eto yung the rest of the tribes of Israel, Northern, tapos nandun din yung Southern Kingdom, which is Judah and Benjamin and the Levites kasi nandun ang templo. So basically, nauna yung Northern Kingdom, if I'm not mistaken, that's 7.6 something. So, mga 150 years. 
bago bumagsak naman ang Jerusalem. So, matagal, no? So, sounding of the renewal. Bakit ito sinabing signals the fulfillment of God's kingdom? Kasi parang dating sa atin, uh, fulfilled na, hindi eh. No? Signal lang kasi it took 118 years no? under the reign of the Persian Empire 118 years pa ang lumipas para matapos yung rebuilding of the temple. Dito, sa binasa natin, no? uh, later on sa kanilang pagbabalik, binanggit yung pangalang Belshazzar. Diba? Uh, Shes Bazar, Prince of Judah. Siya, siya yung unang naging governor dun sa Judah. No? Parang province ng Empire Judah. Siya yung unang governor. Kasunod nun, nandun pa si Joshua, no? Azerubabel, Joshua, Ezra, Nehemiah. So alam ni, lima sila. Itong 118 years yan. So ganun katagal. Kaya nga simula pa lamang yan, kututusin, that signal si. Pero alam niyo po, higit pa dun eh. Pero anyway, it signals the fulfillment of God's promise parang sinimulan na ng Panginoon to pa rin yung kanyang pangako. At hindi lamang si King Cyrus ang kanyang hinipo, di ba? Ano yung binasa sa ating kanina? The heads of the families of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and the Levites, everyone whose spirit God had stirred, got ready to go up and rebuild the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. Take note, kung taatin pa, Dinideport sila, pero excited silang bumalik. <laughs> Ganon yung dating dito. Kasi, inistir din ng Lord yung heart nila. Remember, that's 50 years after the fall of Jerusalem. So, matagal-tagal din yan. That's one generation. Huh? Kaya, iniisip ko, bakit sila lang? How about the rest of the tribes of Judah? Kasi, dalawa lang itong nabangit, di ba? Judah and Benjamin, and then partly the Levites. Paano yung mga ibang tribe ng Israel? Yung Northern Kingdom. Niisip ko lamang, siguro kasi nauna silang na-deport 150 years, no? ah, na, na-exile 150 years ahead. Parang ang hirap mo nang i-gather siguro yun. No? Parang nakalubog na rin sila sa kanilang mga bayan. No? Kaya, yun po nangyari. Anyway, ito pong pagsasalarawan dito, na mabasa natin later on, no? para bang nirehash ng writer ng Ezra and Nehemiah yung exile from Egypt, no? when they were freed, ano nangyari? Nung sa Egypt sila, di ba? They were redeemed from their being slaves in the nation of Egypt. And then, anong response ng mga kapitbahay nila? Di ba ganun din? Binigyan, binigay sa kanila yung mga golds and silver. So in a way, parang oh, yung pattern, no? inuulit. Exile, yun, dun yung pattern. And then later on, di ba, mababasa natin sa Nehemiah, chapter 8 or 9, na parang, parang ito yung kwan, pagbibigay muli ng law. No? They were gathered again in the wilderness. And then, the covenant was given to them through Moses, di ba? So, para bang, ang, ang pinapakita dito sa Esther and Nehemiah, yung renewal of the nation Israel, parang nire-rehash kung paano nire-redeem ng Lord ang the people of God from their slavery in Egypt and then wilderness and then they're given this promised land. So, kaya nga, all their neighbors aided them with silver, with gold. So, anyway, Ibinabalik ni King Cyrus lahat supposedly no mga hinakot ni Ransak ni King Nebuchadnezzar. Ibinabalik niya para nandun yung continuity ng temple, no? kung tutusin. Bago na nga yung temple, kasi napakaganda naman talaga yung temple na ginawa ni King Solomon at nasira. So, yun. kaya nga later on makikita nyo pag mababasa nyo yung mga ibang prophets nagawa na nga yung temple, pero dahil nga naalala nila yung napakagandang templo, umiyak na lang sila eh. Ganon yung damdami ng mga Israelitan. So, ibinalik sa kanila 
Well, King Cyrus himself brought out the vessel of the house of the Lord that Nebuchadnezzar carried away. No? Tapos yung uh, binigay yung charge kay Shez Bazaar. Andyan binigyan tayo ng inventory at yan na nga yung simula. You know, later on, dyan sa Ezra, makikita ninyo na kasi iba na yung king ng Persia, para bang gusto niya ipatigil may issue? Ezra chapter 6. No, hinanap nila yung utos na ito ni King Cyrus. Eh. So nakita nila uli, ah okay pala. So tuloy uli yung project. So ganun sila, sakop sila ng bansang Persia. No? Anyway, dito natin makikita mga kapatid na pag gumilos ang Panginoon, hindi lamang yung king, kahit na feeling niya siya yung hari, ginagamit siya para masimulan yung katuparan ng pangako ng Diyos. And then, hindi lamang siya, kundi pati yung people of God. No? Ini-steer ng Lord in their spirit para andun din yung excitement na mag-renew, mag-rebuild. So, kumilos din ang banal na spirito sa mga bayan ng Diyos para masimulan yung renewal and then rebuilding. But you see, actually, dyan naman sa mga outline ninyo, the renewal is not complete. That's far from being complete. Kaya nga signals lang, di ba? Unang-una, it took 118 years. So simula pa lamang itong Ezra chapter 1. 100 years, Ezra to Nehemiah. <laughs> 118 years. Wow. No? It was not, it was only the heads of the families of Judah and Benjamin. Katulad nga nasabi ko kanina. Where's the rest of the tribes of Jacob? Diba? God's promise is the whole nation of Israel. Actually, hindi na banggit eh. No? Yung mga ibang tribes. Hindi eh. Pero ano pa ako ng Lord sa Jeremiah? Let's look at Jeremiah chapter 30 verses 8 to 9. For behold, days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will restore the fortunes of my people. Ano yan? Israel and Judah, ibig sabihin, North, the Northern Kingdom and the Southern Kingdom. I-restore ng Panginoon, says the Lord, and I will bring them back to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall take possessions of it. Verse 3, verses 8 and 9, And it shall come to pass in that day, declares the Lord of hosts, that I will break yung yoke of slavery nila, being under the foreign nations, and I will burst your bounds, and foreigners shall no more make a servant of you. But they shall serve the Lord their God, and David their king, whom I will raise up for them. No? Namaya, babalikan natin yan. Kasi sabi rito ang pangako ng Lord eh. I will raise up David. <laughs> Matagal nang patay si David. No? Kaya, I will raise, eh, ma, babanggitin natin yan mamaya. Hindi, hindi lamang sa Jeremiah chapter 30. And yun din yung Jeremiah 33. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring for David and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will dwell securely. And this is the name by which it will be called, The Lord is Our Righteousness. So, take note mga kapatid, yo. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. But hindi complete, kasi nabanggit lang dyan, ano? Judah and Benjamin. So, wala yung ten tribe, the other ten tribes. Although, part of the Levites ando dun kasi nagsiserve nga sa temple. What's the point in all of this? Actually, in the book of Ezra and Nehemiah, feel na feel talaga nila yan. Alam nila na 
this is far from being the fulfillment of God's promise. I particularly remember this kasi ako yung nag-spawn na ito eh. Nehemiah chapter 9. Umiiyak sila. No? After rehears- rehearsing God's faithfulness, mercy, and grace, ito yung sa dulo ng Nehemiah chapter 9. Parang sinasabi na, Lord, you are faithful, you are merciful, pero kaya tignan nyo kami, we're still slaves. Sabi nila rito, di ba? Behold, we are slaves up to this day. Nehemiah chapter 9. Natapos na yung temple, natapos na rin yung wall, buo na rin yung Jerusalem, city of Jerusalem. Pero ito, they are still slaves. No? At nakita nga natin na hirap na hirap sila dahil ang taas nung tax na iniimpose sa kanila ng king of Persia. No? Yun yung dahilan kung bakit naghihirap siya. No? Kahit na mayamang ka at kung wala ka talagang means, talagang, eh, siyempre sila yung kanya, nagkakanya-kanyahan, di ba? Napag-aralan natin yun. Behold, we are slaves up to this day in the land that you gave to our fathers to enjoy its fruit and its good gifts. Behold, we are slaves. Tapos, yung kanila mga ani, in its rich yield, goes to the kings you have set over us because of our sins. Para bang patay din sila sa taxation. No? They rule over our bodies and over our livestock as they please. And we are in great distress. Yes, God is faithful, merciful, and gracious. Paya sabi niya, Lord, look down upon us. What's the point? The fulfillment of God's promise is far from being complete. In fact, ano sabi dun sa binasa natin kanina? How many years? 70 years, di ba? After 70 years, kasi yun yung katumbas na hindi sila nag-observe ng Sabat to dalan, no? Bumaksak yung kingdom ng Judah, bumaksak ang Jerusalem, That's 586 B.C. Tapos yung edict ni, ano, ni King Cyrus is 538 B.C. That's merely 48 years. Eh, hindi 70 eh. Ang pangako ng Lord, 70. In fact, up to the time ng ating Panginoong Isus, yan pa rin ang pinag-uusapan ng mga hundyo. No? Kailan, kailan yung 70 years? Para matupad na yung pangako ng Panginoon sa atin. Sinimulan lang, pero alam nila, hindi ito. In fact, kung mababasa mo yung Malakay, ito yung, ando dun yung kwan, temple, umaangal yung mga priest kasi para bang boring naman dito sa temple, wala ang presence ng Lord. No? Tapos ang sabi ng Lord sa Malakay, I will go back to the temple. Ibig sabihin, wala. Ang presence ng Lord, wala rin sa temple. So alam nila, No? Why is this? Because all of God's promises only found its fulfillment in Christ. Take note of that. No? All of God's promises found its fulfillment only in Christ. Yan po yung sinasabi sa 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Verse 20. For all the promises of God find their yes in Him. That is why it's through Him that we utter our amen to God for His glory. Kaya kung babalikan natin yung verse 1, the word of the Lord by the mouth of the Lord might be accomplished. Actually, para sa atin, ng mga mananampalataya ngayon, the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah are already accomplish in Christ. Medyo mahaba-haba ang ating conclusion ngayon. <laughs> Remember yung binasa natin kanina that the Lord will raise up King David alam nyo, etong Jeremiah 29 up to 33, andyan dyan yung mga pangako. Pero kung meron pang mas 
quoted sa New Testament yung Isaiah chapter 40 to 55. So, andiyan dyan talaga yung referring sa ginawa ng Panginoon through His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Sabi dun sa binasa natin sa Jer- Jeremiah chapter 30, But they shall serve the Lord their God and David their King, whom I will raise up for them. Remember, matagal nang patay si King David niyan. No? At ang sinasabi ng Panginoon, no? ang, ang paghahari muli, mula sa lipi ni King David, and I will raise him up. Actually, this is alluded by Paul in Romans chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. Take note of that, no? kasi napakahanggenda na ito. Eh, no? Pamilyar tayo sa Matthew 28, eh, na all authority has been given to me. Pero actually, this spells out the gospel for us. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scripture concerning his son who was descended from David and was declared to be the son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness by his resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Remember, that's the good news. Jesus Christ is... Lord, katulad ng pinangako ng Panginoon pa sa Jeremiah. No? Kaya nga, unang-una mga kapatid, our hope is not what? Our hope is who? It's in the person of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our hope is Christ Jesus our Lord. I'm quoting Romans 15. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse will come, even he who rises to rule the Gentiles. In him will, tayo, Gentiles. In him will the Gentiles hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. So several, inulit yang kanina, di ba, binasa natin? He will raise us, Kim David, and then sumusunod dun sa chapter 33, Jeremiah, ano sabi dun? One from the seed of David. So, eto po. But anyway, I'll be focusing more. No? Kasi, ang ganda yung sinasabi niya. First Timothy 1.1, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by command of God, our Savior, and of Christ Jesus, our hope. No? So, suma total, yung ating pag-asa po talaga ay ang ating Panginoong Jesus. And I hope in prayer na it will take our whole lifetime just to know Him no? and what He has done because that is actually what Our hope is. But anyway, since ang binanggit dito si Prophet Jeremiah will be focusing more on Jeremiah. Let us continue focusing on God's promises through the Prophet Jeremiah, which is the subject that we are reminded of whenever we celebrate the Lord's Supper. Remember? Celebrate natin nila ang Lord's Table kanina. Yung words of institution of the Lord's table, just as I received from the Lord, verse 23, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, I now share to you that the Lord Jesus in the night it was, when he was betrayed, he took bread and after giving thanks, he broke it and said, take this and eat from this. For whenever you eat of this bread, you remember me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, no? saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Take note. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Yes. Ako, honestly, mga kapatid, yun lang maalala natin na gano'n tayo kamahal ng Panginoong Isus. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Pano yun eh? Higit pa sa sapat eh. 
Mahal tayo ng Panginoon, pero gusto pa niya tayo sa presahin kasi higit pa dun. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. And ito po yung binabanggit sa Jeremiah. No? Here is Jeremiah. Thirty-one verses thirty-one to thirty-four. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make, I know, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant that they broke through, though I was their husband, declares the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts. Wow. I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother saying, Know the Lord for they shall know of me from the least of them to the greatest. Declares the Lord, I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. So kasama ng New Covenant yung forgiveness sa atin ng Panginoon, yung kayang pagmamahal. Pero higit pa dun, no? It's the renewal of whole creation. Maganda ito kasi last Sunday, no? Doon sa message ni Pastor Ronel, pinakita yun sa atin kung paano yung mga ipinangako ng mga Israeleta, di ba? Chapter 10, ah, chapter 10 ng Nehemiah, ando dun yung pangako nila <laughs> tutuparin namin ito, itong nakasulat sa COVID, eh, wala lang. Hindi pa nakakabalik si, <laughs> si Nehemiah dun sa Persia. Eh. Wala, kanya-kanya na yung mga tao. No? Ibig sabihin, mga pat, nanumpa sila, nasusundin nila, hindi nila natupad. Kaya nga, sabi rito, no? I will put my law in their heart. So, wala pa yun. Obviously, wala. <laughs> Here's another. This is, although I think mali yung quotation dyan, eh. chapter 32, verses 37 to 41. Behold, I will gather them from all the countries to which I drove them in my anger and my wrath and in great indignation. I will bring them back to this place and I will make them dwell in safety and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever for their own good and the good of their children after them. I will make them you know, an everlasting covenant that I will not turn away from doing good to them, and I will put the fear of me in their hearts. So I do the fear of the Lord in their hearts that they may not turn from me. I will rejoice in doing them good and I will plant them in this land in faithfulness with all my heart and all my... No, yung binabasa ko yung last line. Ang God, ang pangako niya, with all my heart and all my soul. Wow! <laughs> ano, can, you, can you imagine, God? Para bang... Kung sa atin, eh, meron tayong pecs ba, no? kaya sharing ng pink end, <laughs> sabi ng Lord... I will be faithful to you. I will bring all of this to pass with all my heart and all my... So, ano yung binabasa ko ito, mga kapatid, talaga namang, oh, wow. No? Ganun na lamang yung ating Panginoon. Kaya nga maganda, mga kapatid, balikan natin, kung ano ba talaga nangyari no? sa kwentong palilitas ng Diyos. And here it is again. I share this to you. I think I will be sharing this whenever the Word of God uh, allows me to. God's redemptive story. So, para sa mga Israeleta, the people of God, which ito rin mababasa natin sa Bible, tawag nila, ito, this present evil age. That's a term that I also pick up from the Bible, especially sa New Testament. This present evil age. Anong meron sa present evil age? Ang dyan, sabi nga ni, ni 
Paul, the God of the age. No? Si Satan, the God of this world. So, gahari siya. Pinaglalaroan yung puso ng mga tao. No? Under ng kasalanan. Under dyan yung brokenness, di ba? Under yung death. Reality of death. And then, mababasa natin sa, sa Old Testament, the Holy Spirit is only given to a few. No? Usually, outside dyan, ini-steer lang ng God ng heart niya. No? No? King Cyrus, leaders ng Judah and Benjamin so that ang dudu yung enthusiasm nila to, to bring back. You see, eto ang kaibahan. Actually, etong Ezra and Nehemiah establishes the people of Israel as the people of the book. No? Mababasa natin yung special in Ezra and Nehemiah. No? Talagang when they vowed no, to keep the covenant, especially this is the Torah, the first five books of the Bible that we have. So, ito yung pinangahawak nila. They are the people of the book. Kaya nga mabait ang at least yung mga matatinong Muslim, mabait sila sa mga Hudyo. Bakit? Kasi pareho sila eh. Pareho silang people of the book. <laughs> ang mga Muslim naman, Quran. Sila naman, eto, no? the, the Torah. But beyond that, ang mga Israeleta are also known as the people of hope. Kasi kahit na ganitong hirap, they still look forward to the time, the end, the, the day of the Lord, dahil pagkatapos niya, the, the end of history, magkahari na ang Panginoon, the kingdom of God. Just ano na paniniwala? God will reign? Ando dun yung kapatawanan? Ando dun yung healing? Ando dun yung resurrection? And then the Holy Spirit will be given to all. So yan na ang pag-asa ng Israel. Kaya nga, hindi sila bumibigay kahit na anong hirap. No? I mean, actually, there is this one writer. Nakalimutan ko lang yung first name niya. I'm sure some of you know sir. Siya yung author ng Vampire Diaries ba yun? Rice, ang apelido niya. Ha? Ha? Anne Rice, yan. Thank you. <laughs> si Anne Rice. Actually, pagpupunta kayo sa National Bookstore, isang isang, kwan, isang parang shelf, puro unrise book. No? Pero hindi kasama dun yung sinulat niya nung no, naging Christian siya. No? Kasi before his, her death, bumalik siya sa pananampalataya. And you know what brought, brought her back to faith? Pinag-aralan niya yung history ng Israel. At nakita niya, oh wow! <laughs> Bakit buhay pa ito mga taong to? So, kotakot-takot, nahirap ang inabot nila in everything. Remember, isang halimbawa na lamang, the Jewish language, yung Hebrew, is a dead language for hundreds of years. Hundreds of years. It's a dead language. Walang gumagamit niyan ng language na yan. And then, 1948, no, binigyan sila ng karpata na bumalik sa Palestine through UN. Di ba? Ma-establish yung nation Israel. Parang kinabukasan lang. Buhay na lang yung language. <laughs> Parang, papano yun? <laughs> Sabi nga, it's the people of the book. Diyan buhay yung mga sinagog. Nagkaroon ng mga sinagog. Dahil nga sa panahon ni Estra ni Maya, they are the people of the book. At pag nag-aaral ka ng, ng uh, Torah, it seems nandudong ka sa temple. Yun yung kanilang, uh, kaya nga may mga synagogues. No? Pero they, they are the people of hope. At dyan ta, I mean, mga kapatid, hindi natin mayalis na tayo mga Kristiyano, sabi nga ni Paul, are what? Grafted into the tree of Israel. And that's through our Lord Jesus Christ. This present evil age, Diyan dumating yung ating Panginoong Isus, the Christ, life, and death, di ba? which we just celebrated through the Holy Week. And then, after three days after He died, He rose again. Hindi siya na-resuscitate. No? The way that we're parabang using the language, actually, pag uh, sinasabing he, he was 
raised from the dead, para bang nabuhay lang siya. Hindi, this is resurrection. Ito yung resurrection na inaasahan nila sa end times. Kaya nga sabi ni Paul, yung para sa lahat, na simula na mangyari sa ating Panginoong Isus. No? Kaya yung, yung end na yan, this end, naging dalawa. No? This end, na sinimulan, tapos magkakaroon ng consummation. Kaya nga, eto sa panahon, ito ngayon, dahil nga sa kamatayan at muling pagkabuhay ng ating Panginoon Sus, andiyan dyan na ngayon yung binigay din sa atin ng Holy Spirit, Acts chapter 2. And then, andiyan dyan din yung pagkahari na ng Diyos, the kingdom of God is here and not yet, kasi hindi pa consummated, pero sinimulan na. And then, there's forgiveness of sin, at um, doon din yung healing for some, pero yung Holy Spirit ibinigay na. Kaya nga ang tawag po dyan ay period of overlap. Andiyan dyan pa rin yung reality ng sin, brokenness, and death, pero andiyan dyan na rin yung sinimula na ng Panginoon sa atin at sa lahat ng mga nananampalataya sa Kanya. Kaya nga yun yung period of overlap. That is our hope. Kung tutusin, yung hope natin, kung ikaw na kay Kristo, nagsisimula na, nananahan na sa bawat isa sa atin. Colossians 1.27 Christ in you, the hope of glory. No? That's one line na napakagandang isa puso. Christ in you, the hope of glory. No? That's actually a temple language. Kaya nga, mga kapatid, whenever we celebrate the Lord's Supper, let us take to heart and live out our Christian hope. Nangyari sound sa atin ng word ngayon ng Lord sa atin ay yung hope na meron tayo. Para sa Ezra and Nehemiah, sabi rito, it signals the fulfillment. Pero para sa atin, no, we are, sabi nga sa 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10, we are the people on whom the end of the ages has come. Para ba yung end of the age dumating na sa atin? Kaya nga, ito yung hinihiling sa atin ng Panginoon na ating ipinamu, ipamumuhay. Let us live a life of intimacy with God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Yung encouragement sa atin ni Elder Ted kanina, di ba? Yung una nating song, narito kami, nagpapakumbaba, sumasamba sa iisang Diyos, hinahanap namin, karikta ng iyong muka, sumas ah, alam niyo yung song na yun hinahanap mo ang kariktan the beauty of his presence uh, these are languages of intimacy eh. no na sabi nga ni third sa ating kanina ito ba yung nararanas natin whenever we come to meet god in prayer whenever we read this word i hope so and i pray so no let us live a life of intimacy with god and savior so. and sa Jeremiah, ilang beses inulit yan, and you shall be my people and I will be your God. No, yun ang kanyang fulfillment ng promise niya. Once that is fulfilled, we are His people and He is our God. No? And then, let us obey the Lord from our hearts. Di ba? Sabi doon sa binasa natin, Jeremiah 31, I will put my law within them and I will write them on their hearts. And then thirdly, whenever we celebrate the Lord's table, no? yun yung reminder sa atin ng Lord, say I'm talking about the new covenant in my blood, eh, di ba? I'm just citing all of this dun sa sinasabing new covenant in my blood. Let us walk in the Spirit. Hindi binanggit ito sa Jeremiah 
Pero ito po yung sa Ezekiel, chapter 36. I will take you from the nation and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you. You shall be clean and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Ayan, may heart transplant. No? And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. You shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers and you shall be my people and I will be your God. So kasama ng new covenant ay yung Holy Spirit that's now dwelling in us. Ezekiel 36, 24 to 28. And let us abound in hope. Sabi nga sa Romans 15 kanina, di ba? Gusto ng Panginoon sa ating pag-aaral ng lumang tipan, no? To, as we are encouraged, as we are revived, that our heart will abound in hope. Hindi natin binanggit ito, pero parati na babanggit, di ba? Remember, yung mga benediction that is pronounced over us? Ephesians chapter 3. Now unto him who is able to do far more, immeasurably more than we can imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. Ibig sabihin, the Holy Spirit is working within us. At ang sabi ni Pablo, sa kanyang benediction, unto him who is able to do far more, immeasurably more than what we can imagine. <laughs> Parang, ano ba yung makayang pang-imagine mo? Pag hinipo na ng Lord ang puso mo, imagine mo, ito yung means, He's more than able to do, far more than we can imagine, according to His, what? According to His power within us. And that's the Holy Spirit. Kaya sabi ni Pablo, Philippians 1.6, and I'm sure of this, that He who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of the... Sinimula na ng Panginoon. At ganun ang kumpiyansa ni Pablo. No? Actually, kung babasahin mo yung 1 Corinthians, 1 and 2 Corinthians, mga Kristiyano ba ito, mga taong ito? <laughs> Pero ganun ang confidence ni Pablo. Eh. Nagsimula na ang Panginoon na kumilos sa iyo. Kaya sabi niya, I'm sure of this. He who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Remember? Inauguration and completion. Yung completion yung sinasabi nating second coming. No? Yun yung inaasahan natin when all of this will be completed. How about this? Jude 24 to 25. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling, and to present you blameless before the presence of His glory with great joy. Have you really taken that to heart? Uh, may honestly, mga kapatid. I don't know kung tatanggapin nyo, pero I'm struggling with sin. Pero ang sinasabi rito sa Jude 24-25, Now to Him who is able to keep you from stumbling, or to keep you from sinning and to present you ano, blameless before the presence of His glory and with great joy. Pain. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Can you imagine yourself standing before the presence of God? Blameless. <laughs> and with great joy. Honestly, kung i-imagine ko yung sarili ko, talagang nakayuko ako at hiyang-hiya eh. But that's the word of the Lord. Why? Because of the Holy Spirit that's now given to each and every one of us. To the only God, our Savior, to Jesus Christ, our glory, be glory, majesty, dominion, authority, now and forever. 
let me end with this parody. No? Kasi katatapos lamang ng Holy Week, di ba? Last Sunday is Easter Sunday. But there was this parody shared to us by my sister-in-law no? sa grupo namin, Gonzaga. Have you seen this parody of the resurrection? Kasi Palestine, di ba? Doon muling nabuhay ang ating Panginoong Isus. So, lumabas siya. Eh, bakbakan doon sa Palestine eh. Ayan. Huh. Gulat siya. Jera. Huh? Okay na sana yan. Eh. Kaya lang may karugtong. Takbo siya uli sa loob. <laughs> ah, sinarado uli. Para hindi siya tamaan ng bomba. <laughs> reaction nyo dun sa parody na ito? What is your reaction? Honestly? Actually, in the first two slides, first two, is what resurrection is all about. Nung muli bang nabuhay ang ating Panginoong Isus, di ba sako pa rin sila ng bansang Romano? They were under the reign of the Roman Empire. And mind you, when you read the cruelty of the Romans, <laughs> they are civil if you are Roman citizen. No? Actually, pag Roman citizen ka, kung i-execute ka dapat by the sword. No? Kasi may dignity. Pero if you're not a Roman citizen, you will be crucified. And that's the most horrible, horrible, humiliating, embarrassing. Uh, ang intention po ng crucifixion is to humiliate a person. No? To the mass. Ganong kakruel ang bansang Romano. Pag hindi nila gusto nila yung anak, pag hindi nila gusto yung anak, lalo na kung babae, ilalagay lang yan sa labas ng pintuan nila. Pababayaan na kainin ng kung ano-ano pang mga hayop o sino pang... Sasabihin natin, Roman civilization, oh my goodness. <laughs> Kaya nga yung isang hindi ito kristyano, pinag-aralan niya yung Roman Empire, Ah, naging kristyano siya. Alam niyo kung bakit? Ang sabi niya, Christianity restored humanity to the human race. Sabi niya, <laughs> ibanalik daw ang pagiging tao ng kristyanismo. Lalo sa totoo lang, napakalupit ng mundong yun. Okay lang niya, basta okay ka sa mga Romans. No? Katulad nila Hero, di ko yung hari. Kaya nga, I believe Christ knows that and He's crying. Remember? Nung binu... Ano, bago niya buhay si Lazaro, alam niya mabubuhay niya si Lazaro, He was crying. He wept. Why is that? Because He knows the effect of death to us human beings. Kaya from that, sabi sa Romans 8, No? Groaning that are too deep for words. Yun yung ginagawa ng banal na spirito ngayon sa mga nangyayaring kaguluhan sa buong mundo. Well, this is a parody, kaya eto, natakot. Si Christ tumakbo, kumasok uli, at nagtago parang a raid shelter, no? para hindi siya tamaan ng bomba. But you see, This ought to remind us, mga kapatid, bakit ang mga hudyo, hindi sila naniniwala kay Kristo? Pa, napakahirap nila maniwala, biro mo. Paniniwala nila, end of the age, tapos magkahari ng Diyos, wala nang mananakop sa kanila, di ba? Yun ang pangako. Kaya hindi pa, hindi pa nga completed yun, no? Kaya ako, when I see this, I cannot also but cry. Kasi, alam mo, for people, it's hard to believe 
of what we are declaring. Now, in the midst of all of these distractions, sabi mo, Jesus is Lord. That's our hope. That's our hope, mga kapatid. But then you know why a lot of people still don't believe in Christ kasi there's a lot of suffering. But they not. Kung babasahin mo lang history, it could have been much, much worse, mga kapatid. Kaya nga, the challenge for us no? ay ipakita. In closing, we'll be singing a song that says, Heaven and earth will be one. Remember yung song na inawit natin kanina? Iparanas mo sa amin ng iyong kapangyarihan, ipamalas mo sa amin ng iyong kaluwalatian, at sa aming kalagitnay, bumaba ang kalangit. Ah, actually, gusto, gusto ko po yun dahil Wow, sabi ko mayroon pala tayong kantang sa Tagalog na talagang kuling-huli yung pinakalayuni ng Diyos sa kanyang sanilika. Ang papag-aisahin ang langit at lupa. Sa Bible, yung temple is where heaven and earth meets. Hindi yan, kunyari, sa kanila hindi, yun ang paniniwala nila. Kung gusto mong maranasan kung saan nagtatagpo ang langit at ang lupa, yun yung templo. E eh, namasak na yung templo, eh, di ba? Pero sa New Testament, sabi rito, Christ in you, the hope of glory. 1 Corinthians Chapter 3 and chapter 6, you are the temple of God. Why? Because the Holy Spirit dwells in you. Bawat isa sa atin, mga kapatid, <laughs> parang patikim yan ng Panginoon kung paano nagtatagpo ang langit at lupa. Remember that. Bawat isa sa atin. Kaya nga ang challenge sa atin, sabi nga, let us once more resound our hope in our hearts. Before I close in prayer, I'd like to ask the worship team to lead us in singing that song. Let's all stand up.
this as our prayer, especially the last line. Lord, let us never forget na kahit na maraming maraming mga suffering, nandudun yung kaguluhan, wars and rumors of war, yung mga personal struggles po namin, sickness, death of our loved ones, in the midst of all of this, Panginoon, alam namin that you are returning to complete what you have started in each of every one of us. That indeed, heaven and earth will be one. Alam ko, Panginoon, para sa aming mga Pilipino, yung pangungusap na parang bumaba ang langit sa lupa, masasabi namin ito, Lord, when there's really the meeting of hearts, pagkakaisa sa pamilya, pagkakasunduan, pagpapatawaran, pagkakaroon, Lord, ng mustisya. At yun ang pinakalayo din niyo po sa aming buhay, Panginoon. Kaya, let us never forget our hope that has begun in each and every one of us. Maraming maraming salamat. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen and amen. Maraming salamat po. Ready, KBCF? Help us hatch ideas. We are looking for people to serve with their talents. If you are a copy, script, or content writer, a graphic designer, or a multimedia artist, We need your help for special projects. If interested, please approach Pastor RJ Saavedra or Batch Dilo of the KBCF Building Project Ad Prom Team.
Morning. Ayan. So, uh, before we go to dun sa announcements natin, so, may bulletin po kayo. So, inside that bulletin, may dalawang pieces of paper. Uh, we will never fail to remind you. So, isa po is for your praises and prayer request. So, if you want to be prayed specifically, you can leave your name there. Meron po dong box for your name. Pero, okay lang din man if you want to remain anonymous. Um, yeah, so just a reminder on that one. And then, uh, you can take this time to fill that piece of paper. Um, and also, yung envelope naman is for our tithes and offerings later. So, mamaya, uh, the, band, the band will play a music and you can go in front to um, give your tithes and offerings. Alright, so for our announcements, uh, we will have a couple of announcements po. Um, tuloy pa rin ang Lead 101 and Lead 201. So this started, uh, I believe, yesterday. So nag-start sila ng first session yesterday. Um, this will continue every Saturday, uh, Lead 101 and Lead 201. So uh, magkaiba lang yung oras, um, 10 a.m. for the Lead 101 and then 2 p.m. for the Lead 201. And then next Sunday, uh, we will have for those na um, disciples and ministry leaders, magkakaroon po tayo na assembly right after the worship service. So that's next week, April 14, we will have our disciples and ministry leaders assembly. So right after the worship service po yan. And the, that coming Friday, we will have the single adults fellowship naman at 7 p.m. That's Friday. And then, the Saturday, we'll have the Youth Fellowship. So, sunod-sunod ang ating mga ano, activities. Uh, April 20, Youth Fellowship, 5 p.m. And then, April 21, wala po siya dito sa ating bulletin. Um, nakalimutan lang ilagay, pero medyo matagal pa naman. Uh, the, the music team. So, kung sino po ang part dito ng music team, and even the technical team, you will have a assembly as well. So, right after the service on April 21, the music team and the technical team will have an assembly right after the service. So, yun po siya. And then, of course, the midweek, midweek prayer gathering also continues every Wednesday at 7 p.m. via Zoom. So, if you're part po nung mga group chats natin sa... Uh, ministry, ay, mga home builders, youth, single adults. Palagi po sila nagre-remind. No, may kita nyo minsan, nagme-message si, uh, si Luke, si Jay um, to come and participate in our midweek prayer gathering. Another reminder is uh, this coming April 9 and 10. So if you have any um, need or business activity for the church, Sarado po ang ating office. So, April 9 and 10 po is a holiday. Um, just be reminded of this. So, the office is closed on April 9 and 10. Ayan po. Okay. So, let's go on to our birthday celebrants. I think medyo marami. Okay. We have actually today, April 7, we have Shin Balicer and Nika Quaresma. Are they here po? Wala. Ala po. Okay. And then April 12, si Cedric Luna and si Kuya Ezra. Are they here? Wala po. And then April 13, si Tita Feli Heramia, Tita Tess Luna, and then si Kuya Emmanuel Valencia. Are they here? Wala po. Ayan. Wala ang ating mga birthday celeb. Okay lang. Okay lang. Man. We will still pray for them. Um, anniversary. Ba? Tatlong pastor. No? Today, April 7, si Pastor VJ and si Ate Sesika. Uh, Ate Sesika siguro nasa baba, no? Pati si Kuya VJ. Ah, okay. So they're both uh, downstairs, nasa children's ministry po kasi. Ayan, si Pastor VJ and Ate Sesika. Ses. And then April 9, ayan, sa holiday, Pastor Ellie and si Ate Ruth Rodriguez. Um, yeah, I don't see them here as well. Uh, April 12, oh, Pastor June and si Tita Alma, oh, Pastor June, celebrating their wedding anniversary. 
And, and then si Kuya Jerry and Tita Belen, Leonen. They here? Wala po. And then si Kuya Andro and Hannah Sado. Wala. Okay. So I guess, um, ay, visitors. Meron po ba tayong visitors for the first time? Ah, oh, meron. Uh, Kuya Ephraim, Kevin, Segara. Ah, hello po. Nasa, nasa back. Can, can you please stand para ma-recognize? And then si Ate Cecil, Segara. Ayan, nasa likod po. Ayan. Welcome po, welcome. Um, ay, sorry. Can, can you still uh, keep standing? We'll ask you to come in front. Um, same with Pastor June. Uh, we would like to pray for you po. No, oh, okay lang. Don't be shy. Ayan. We would like to pray for you po, um, Pastor June as well. Ayan. So welcome po. Okay. Ah, meron pa po ba? Hello po. Sige po. Ayan. Sige, let's extend our uh, right hand of blessing. Let's pray for them. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this moment that we are here as a church to praise you, to give you glory, to hear your message. Panginoon. And also to pray for our brothers and sisters here. Uh, we pray for those who are celebrating their birthdays. Hindi man po namin sila kasama ngayon, but we know that you are continuing to bless their lives, Panginoon. And we thank you for the life that you have uh, given to them. Uh, another year, Lord God, that you really have sustained them, Panginoon. We also pray for our wedding celebrants, Panginoon. Thank you for being a part of their journey as husbands and wife, we thank you that you are the covenant keeper, the promise keeper, Panginoon. And in this marriage, Lord God, this matrimony, Panginoon, talagang you are part every step of the way in that journey. We lift them up to you, Panginoon, ang mga celebrate, continue to protect their marriage, continue to be with them, provide for them, and bless them, Panginoon. And even for our visitors today, thank you, Lord God, for leading them here in our church. Maraming salamat, Panginoon, dahil you have a plan. And we know, Lord God, that this won't be the last time that we will, we will see them, Panginoon, here. And we just thank you for this opportunity that we are able to welcome them and pray for them. Bless them, Panginoon, their whole family. Continue to provide for their needs, Panginoon. And kung ano man ang kanilang mga challenges, struggles sa buhay, we know, Lord God, that you are continuously working and you are in control over everything, Panginoon. Again, maraming salamat for this time. Maraming salamat for this opportunity to pray for them, Lord God. And this, we pray in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Welcome. Thank you, Pa. Welcome, Pa. Sige, Pa. Tayo na po makapo. Ayan. Um, can I uh, call everyone and then na noon na yung drums? Eh. Pero sige, let's go in front and uh, let's give our tithes and offerings as a form of worship to our Lord. Ayan, Pa. Let's go, Orange. <laughs> Running with courage and faith The prize of my journey The joy of salvation To me, my King face to face To me, my King face to face To me, my King face to face Ayan. Sige po, uh, let's pray for our tithes and offerings. Panginoon Diyos, maraming salamat for you continue to bless us, Panginoon. 
uh, we lift to you our tithes and offerings. This is also a form of our worship, Panginoon, sa inyo. Because you own everything. Lahat ng aming kinikita, lahat ng aming ari-arian, even our lives, Lord God, you own them. So please accept this. Our tithes and offerings, may it be pleasing unto you, Panginoon, and may you use this for the advancement and the glory of your kingdom. Again, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's all stand and sing this uh, benediction from Psalm 121, and then Pastor June will give his blessings to us as we close in prayer. resounding our Christian hope for each and every one of us. And I pray that we will all abound in hope. Sa Kanya na makapag-iingat sa ating lahat upang hindi tayo magkasala at makapagharap sa atin sa Kanyang kalwalatian na punong-puno ng kagalakan at walang bahid ng kapintasan sa isang Diyos na ating tagapagkas. Sa kanya kapurihan, karangalan, Kadakila at kapangirihan mula pa noon, ngayon, at magpakailanman. All the people of God says, Amen and Amen.